I'm going to turn around to the audience and ask folks in the audience if you guys have any questions, uh, please. Uh, we have about an hour and a half left. Uh, usually a question takes anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes because uh, usually folks tend to get everyone to, to address it. But uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand and uh, just state it. If you have one, somebody in specific you want to ask, Butch, okay, we'll go to you, Butch. Uh, let me know if it's for the whole panel. I'll go ahead and direct it to, to who should start based on the time so far. So, Butch, you have a question? Constitution in 99 were based on money, and other changes that have happened over the years have been based on the concern for money. And then two, what would you propose to do to fix that? Uh, meaning, how would you define our grand raw people? Uh, and uh, how should we try to resolve this, this issue of what is a grand raw tribal member? Is, is that more or less what you're at? Based yeah. So, so if a lot of these enrollment decisions and the raw changes in our enrollment uh, criteria are based on money, uh, how do we get away from that? Because I'm sure none of you are going to say that's the reason why we should be doing any of our decisions. Uh, so, how do we define who we are as, as grand raw people? How limited? How how broad should we should we be? Mark, let's start with you for sure. Okay, well, first of all, I mean, if I get elected to the council, then I will have to see exactly what the process they now use, as opposed to the process we used to use, you know, when I did serve on travel council. But another thing, uh, we always had a committee made up of elders who were very familiar with the five tribes as they be noted on the logo, the five feathers. The Kalapuya, the Rogue River, Ankwa, Shasta, and uh, the Bolala. And so, at that time, it was uh, just a, 
the issue, I think that the tribe did the best they could and uh, seeing that they made it as fair as they possibly could. And so then, I don't have the total answer. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I do, because I don't. The only thing I can assure you is that uh, I will just at least look at the process and if we have to do something that's going to make a change and see what's going to be required to make such a change. That's going to be fair for everybody. Okay. Um, to be honest, I, you know, I wasn't a leader at, in 1999, so I don't know why those decisions were made, honestly. But I can tell you that if we're going to be frank and talk about this in an open, you know, discussion in an open, honest way, then I think it has to be said that I think that people who were in leadership at that time, they were concerned about money. And I think that we just, you know, had started a successful business, and I think that once they saw the roles start to increase the way that they did, because they increased exponentially once the business came about, right? So I think that that has a lot to do with why that 99 decision, you know, why why that started, and why those disenrollments started to be started to happen to families. Um, but I think that you know nowadays, you know, those decisions they can't be based on on money. You know, there's a bigger picture here in Indian country um, that has to do with sovereignty and it has to do with blood quantum. And for people to put a blood quantum uh, component on us as a sovereign people and then expect us to accept it and, and thrive in that system, I think is, is wrong from the get-go. Um, I, I think that we as a people, we, we're going to have to face this issue at some point because if you look at this, that's why blood quantum was set up in the first place, was to self-terminate our own people. That's why, that's why it was proposed in the first place. And we have one of the foremost historians of the tribe here in the audience right now. She can tell you that that's why this came about. You know, this, this was to self-terminate Indian people. This was to give them, you know, this sort of hidden time bomb that would eventually go off and eliminate them. So that's why my aunties used to say when we were teenagers, there's all these cute girls that go to school at Chamawa. You should go out there, you know. And we, you know, they wanted us to eat, but you can't. And, and to this day, my, when, when I go out and talk publicly, when people fly me to another state to talk about the tribe or talk about tribal history, people will come up to me and say, did you encourage your children to marry within the tribe? How can you do that? I mean, I, you know, my daughter, you know, she was a complete traitor and went to Oregon State University instead of the University of Oregon, right? So she meets a kid from England. I raised her on Beatles music. She, you know, she, she meets a kid from England. I can't determine who she's going to fall in love with, right? So I can't, I can't put that out there for her or my children. They, they have to choose the people that they fall in love with. So we can't even, we can't even, you know, we can hopefully hope that the blood quantum will continue the way it is, but it's not going to. So we have to look at that issue. To me, that's the bigger part of it. So to summarize, yes, I think that people were scared and started making those decisions back then based on money. I think that now we can't base our decisions on money. And I think that if you look at the budget and the way things are, you're right about people managing the money. And I'm not, I'm not trying to bash anybody, but I can tell you that I, my dad worked for four different governors. He was the first film commissioner for the state of Oregon. So I don't need a highly paid lobbyist to represent me. If I'm on the council, I think I can represent my tribe and my people. I don't need somebody making $250,000 a year to speak for me at the governor's office. I can do that for myself. I, I don't need another $250,000 a year public affairs official to speak for me either because that's my expertise. So there's $500,000 right there. And my whole goal is to bring about economic development that hasn't been thought of yet. My consulting business has brought me into different circles that I didn't think I would ever be involved with. And I've been involved in some high-level things that I think can, we as a tribe can take advantage of and be involved with. That's why I want to do this. So that's why I'm bringing it to the table. So I think that you know, this, this issue came about because of money, but I don't think it can be based on money now. I think it has to be based on kindness. It has to be based on what we're doing as a people. So that's what I think. Okay. Corey. Um, 
you know, I, I think both sides, you know, uh, what this gentleman said about uh, with business and stuff, and you know, you got one side that, uh, you know, people are saying they're greedy, and then the other side when they just think about money and stuff. You know, I talked to somebody that had it all figured out, you know, how many tribe members getting kicked out of the tribe, and how much money we're going to save, and, you know, I'm not going to mention any names, but that's not right. You know where their thinking's at, you know, and... I think there's a business balance between two, you know, with both those issues. And that's what sitting at the table as council is all about, is getting those views, sitting down, having an open mind, making the best decision for the tribe for the future. And, you know, it just goes down to business balance. And if we have to change ordinances, that's what we have to do. Those things aren't written in stone. Council is the one that votes and changes those ordinances. And if it has to be changed for the future of our tribe, then we have to sit down, look at the wording, change it for the future. For a better way of business for the future. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Ed and then to Brenda, then we'll go to Jack. So, uh, sorry, Denise, can we go to Ed real quick and then we'll get, we'll get to you in a second. Sorry, we had Ed raise his hand before. Oh. So we'll go to Ed first. Let's go Brenda, Jack, and then to Denise. I was on tribal council when we did the 99 Amendment. And we were concerned of the explosion of tribal members coming in. And I'll say it, you know, we were concerned about the money. We went out, we went to Portland, we went to Bend, we went to Eugene. We explained it as best we knew how. And, you know, we, we then took a vote of the membership and it passed by 20, uh, 71%, I believe. But, you know, times have changed. It's been 15 years. We need to re revisit it make changes to it, and I support that 100%. Let's go to Brenda. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. <laughs> 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 <Let him lose. laughs> so, uh, I'll say again, I wasn't on council, so I don't, I don't know. I suspect that it was out of, it was money based from fear, but he just kind of confirmed that, so I guess we can say that. Um, the, I, uh, the original intent of the Constitution and when we were first restored, was, it was about people. But then we came into the money. And so now we've got to figure out how to make it about people and, and deal with the money too. And I think that that goes back to what I've been talking about all along is um, uh, education, ed educating our tribal members bringing them back into the community, uh, giving them a sense of purpose, and making them feel like they belong. And then, as a whole community, then we're more looking out after our own people, and the money may then get, go into the back seat instead of into the front seat. But we really need to learn how to bring the money into our original purpose of people. Yeah, I, I wasn't on council during the 99 era, but uh, I was a tribal member and I did vote for the, the Constitution to change. Uh, and I believe it back then it was about the money. Uh, today, I, 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 I see that I, I think I've grown a long way since that era, and I'll, I'll give you my personal belief of what should be to be a Grand Round Indian a tribal member. Uh, if you are descended from anybody that came to this reservation and suffered through the reservation era, I believe that my personal opinion uh, that you should be entitled to be a member of this tribe. But that isn't what the law states. And so uh, it's like I said earlier, the outcomes of this enrollment on it. It, it's, it's the duty of the council to uh, evaluate the, the impacts of that and try and bring forth language to uh, make it, start the healing process and, and changes that possibly could uh, reverse some of those enrollment audit decisions. But it's, it's all based on the Constitution language, you know, and each one of us has a responsibility to vote on any changes of that constitution. I give you my opinion. Each one of us has a, a might be a different opinion. But it's, that's why it's 
Our responsibility as each tribal member to vote on any changes to their constitution. Uh, you know, just like uh, there's other past council up here, you know, they, they made decisions from the information they had at the time and, uh, and thought it, what was the best thought for their and decisions for the tribe moving forward at that time and uh, bringing forth language, you know, and I hope that the, the new council, when we reconvene after this uh, audit and stuff, that we do the same. We bring, bring forth language to help start the healing process. Okay, let's go down to Denise. And I think, Kayleen, Steve, did you guys, Steve, did you, Kayleen, did you want to say something as well? No, okay, we'll go to uh, Denise then. Yeah, but, um, you know, I think it's a combination of things, but I did really think it boils down to the cost of all of our benefits, and you know, the, and you know, it did say they were concerned about how many people were enrolling at that time and how the membership was growing and what they were going to do with that. Um, then again, it comes back to making decisions and not thinking it out. You know, nobody thought about the split families it was going to create years later and what the consequences of that were going to be and how hurtful that was to the families, but, you know, I, I look at just one scenario that maybe could have been, and I, I, you know, I wasn't at the table at that time, I don't know what information they were looking at, but maybe like a decision, like if people were enrolled at another tribe, you actually couldn't come and enroll. There wouldn't have been the issue of disenrolling at this tribe just to come to our tribe. That could have been a decision that would have cut down on the enrollment, and that would have been the responsibility of that individual and not would it wouldn't have affected our current families within the tribe. So I think sometimes maybe that would have been a better decision because that would have been just pretty cut and dry. Okay, you're enrolled in another tribe, but you can't come to Grandma. You're already enrolled with them. Or have some kind of an age thing in there where between the age of 18 and 23, if you were enrolled from your parents in another tribe that you now want to come to Grand Ron and are eligible, then you can't in between that time period because now you're not putting that you know, that individual as an adult has a choice to make. But, I mean, I, I just think when you look at decisions and how the outcomes are going to be, how, you know, how, you, how are you doing that? So, it, it, you know, because I don't think things were thought out well enough to, to understand, you know, we were going to create split families, you know, and the turmoil that that was going to create amongst our people. So, I do think it was probably, in, that kind of said that, you know, it's definitely a money issue, and instead of figuring out how do we, uh, you know, do some economic development, how do we change our structure, maybe we want to set our budget, is there some other way we can do this instead of impacting our people that we ask to come here and to be a part of? Let's go to Steve. That is precisely why I said we need to stop making decisions based on money because it gets us in a pickle every time but you if you don't look at it a little bit that way you're affecting lots of services that we have lots of them that way that we provide for our members so you you have to look at it a little bit that way but we, we need to get back to thinking about our people and the 99 Amendment, in, in my view, we have a very good legal department that, that, uh, that guides us on lots of things. But I was wondering what happened to that part where they didn't look down the road at the effects that this was going to have and, and make very clear to everybody what the effects were going to be. And, Somewhere in there, I don't know where that happened, and it doesn't look like it did, but from now on, when a decision as huge as that is going to be made, I want our legal department to tell me what them effects are going to be down the road. But we do, we do need to, uh, to all work cohesively together. And we have taken on our roles with, uh, you know, I listen to these people talk here, and, and some of us, we, we can talk from knowing from the inside. It's real easy to say things who, about how you would go about doing things without having been there. And I know it's not that easy. 
So, it, it, you know, it, when, you, when you're looking from the outside, you think, well, by God, if I was there, I'd, I'd get them people in line. Well, it's not going to work quite like that. But the government has managed to, and I, and I, can, I can tell you because I was here, they, they, they try to keep Indians down. We are not going to be put down. But we have to make our people not only educated, but motivated. They have to want to get from point A to point B. And they have to do it. We can't pick up that ball and run with it. They have to do it. That's the part where we have to influence them to be motivated to make that happen. And that's when we will be self-sufficient. And then we don't have to go around making decisions based on money and the effects on our services. Yes. Ed, did you want to? Okay. Are you fine? Okay. Anyone else want to comment, Kayleen or Kevin? I just want to make a quick, make oh, a quick, quick statement. Quick. Sure. Um, you know, it just boils down to take care of the people, protect the money for the people. And that's all it is, in my opinion. Thanks, Corey. I'll say that. I don't, I don't want to take up any more time. I don't, I don't no, you, 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 if I can add. you. Go ahead. If you want to do it quickly, that's fine. I think it's, uh, it's uh, really important. To, to, to really listen to people in the way that they talk. Some people that are even up here, when they talk, they're going to separate themselves away from everybody else. They talk about making decisions, this and that. It's very important that we are native people. It's very important that I was taught as a young man to listen to the elders. If you listen to the elders who worked towards restoration, we have an opportunity to get back to the spirit in which we were restored. This tribe, this community that we have here now, was built on big cells. Okay, they went to places. They had tomatoes thrown at them. They went over here to Sheridan, Willamina, McMinnville, and they had the doors shut on them, and that didn't stop them. And I think we have an opportunity now to get away from maybe some of this old thinking. I don't know, and get back to the true intent of what our community was about. And if you listen to the elders who were talking. This is what most of them are saying, is that we need to get back to that old intent that we built this place on bake sales. We built it on tomatoes. We built it on picking up cans on the side of the road. We didn't let nothing stop us. And that's the true intent in which I want to get back to. Thanks, Ed, go ahead. Yeah, one comment I want to make is, you know, we talk about our membership. Let's not forget we've got membership uh, people in every state in this union. We need to effectively reach out to them. And, and that's the piece I see missing when we talk about our membership. You know, because they can't be seen or heard, does that mean they're any less than Indian? No. But, you know, it's a silent majority out there. Reach out to them. And, and that's what we need to look at. You know? Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go to the audience for another question. But before we do that, uh, could you, this lady up front, uh, I, I wanted to piggyback off what Kevin said because the PAC is actually a grassroots organization. Um, we believed five years ago that there wasn't enough political process in our elections and that there wasn't enough sponsored by the tribe, forums, opportunity for folks to get to know the candidates. So we started volunteering our time, donating our own money to hold this and do this. We have, uh, you know, for the last couple of years we haven't asked, but in years past we used to ask the tribe, can we use the auditorium, can we use the tribal facilities and save some money? Because we have to pay for this today, you know. And the tribe always said no. So even our own tribe was saying no to grassroots organizations of tribal members that just want to improve the tribe. And that is, I think, a uh, clear example, a clear case of where our tribe is. The constitution, the policies run the tribe rather than the people we, you know, the Constitution serves us, not the other way around. And that is something we, as people, have the power to change. We've had a couple of constitutional elections in the past. Well, I'm sure we'll have many more in the future. Uh, we just need to get people motivated. And looking in the audience, you know, we've got about 30 people, 20 people here. I agree. It's a shame that we don't have 10 times the amount here because there's thousands of members here in this community. Why aren't they participating in this free process that wants, we want them to participate in? So I just want to make that pitch about the pack and quick history because I think it's important. 